Hello and welcome to this Foster Care Institute online training webinar, Keeping Your House and Family Safe When Caring for Children in Foster Care. I am your host, Dr. John DeGarmo, the founder and director of the Foster Care Institute. I also serve as a consultant to foster care agencies and legal firms. I am a trainer for foster parents and child welfare agencies, and I'm an author and most importantly, I am a parent, a biological, a foster, and an adoptive parent myself. The goal of this webinar is to increase your awareness of how to have your home license when caring for children in foster care and how to keep all who live in your home safe. Home safety is a responsibility that you must be vigilant with at all times. Our key objective is for you to gain understanding of how to develop and implement ways to keep your licensed home safe. Now when you become a foster parent, your home must pass some type of home inspection. You see, whether it's a private or state agency, when an agency places a child in your home. When a child comes into custody of foster care and a caseworker is looking for a home to place a child in, they must ensure that the house, the home, the family this child will be placed in is one that is safe, is one that is free from harm, free from danger, one where the child will be protected. So not only must your home pass inspection, your home must be a safe environment as well. Now with 50 different states in America, that means there are 50 different ways of doing foster care. Sometimes this can be a little bit frustrating. I'm sure you've felt that frustration yourself. Yet, with each state is different and each state has different requirements and different policies and different practices, there are some similarities as well. While some states may be very, very similar in their practices in some matters, they may be different in other matters. But for all 50 states, it is the same when it comes to house safety. Everyone needs to be safe in your home. Every child needs to be safe in a foster care setting. For you see, child welfare and state agencies need to be assured and they need to be reassured and reassured yet again that the child that they're placing in your home is cared for, is safe from harm, and is protected. When a child comes from an environment of abuse, when a child has been neglected, when a child has been abandoned, whatever it may be, and they're placed into a foster care home setting, the agencies must ensure that these, sa these safety standards are met in order for the child to live with your family, in order for the child to be placed in your home. So why is home safety important? Now, whether you are a foster parent or an adoptive parent, whether you are a kinship parent, such as an aunt or an uncle or a grandparent or an older sibling, whether you are a caseworker or a social worker, whether you are a, a CASA employee, or whether you're just somebody who has a heart for children, or maybe you're none of those. Each of us has this thing, thing in common. We all want to come home at the end of a long day, at the end of a time on the road, end of a grueling session, wherever it may be. We want to come home to a state that is a home that is not only comfortable, an environment that is relaxing, we want to come home to our house, our palace, our kingdom, whatever it may be, to an environment that is safe, safe from danger. The dangers that are on the streets, the dangers that are all around us, we want to lock all of that out and feel safe in our home. And perhaps the most important thing we can do as foster parents to ensure that our house is a safe one, is supervision. 
when you are caring for a child in your home, whether it's a foster parent, an adoptive parent, your own children, whatever it may be, you want to ensure that they're safe. And safety begins with your supervision. Supervision of children at all times must be a priority in your life. We've seen those heartbreaking stories in the news. We've read about them online or in magazines or newspapers. We have seen time after time after time of a loving, caring, responsible adult, parent if you will, who turns their back on a child for 5 seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute if you will, turns their back from the child to do something very, very quickly, and disaster strikes. Tragedy is the result. A parent who is supervising the child at all times except for that one second. And that's how long it takes for a child to become hurt or worse. Supervision at all times begins with you. As a foster parent, you need to make sure you know where your child is at all times. Are they upstairs in their bedroom? Are they in the basement? Are they outside in the yard? Are they in the garage? Are they in the kitchen, the lounge room? Are they by your swimming pool? Are they in the swing set? Do you know where they are at all times? You must. That's part of supervision. Supervise a child in your home is the first step to protecting a child living with you. Several years ago, I was outside in my garden working one day, and one of my newer neighbors next door to me, a young adult, was burning some leaves. It was a slightly windy day. The slight wind picked up some of the ashes from the burning leaf pile and carried them over across to my yard. And within seconds, a small fire erupted in my yard. Panicked? I grabbed a water hose and I grabbed a fire extinguisher that was nearby. That's how soon a fire can begin, within a matter of seconds or moments. One way to protect your home from fires is to have a smoke alarm, a fire alarm of some kind. And when you have that smoke alarm and fire alarm on every level of your home and near every bedroom, you need to ensure that batteries are fresh at all times. And one way to do that is to change the batteries of your smoke alarm every six months. Now, will the batteries run out within six months? Most likely not. But it is in your best interest. It is in the best interest of your children. It is in the best interest of your home to have fresh batteries at all times. And one way to do that is to change every six months and find some calendar dates that have some meaning for you to change them on. Perhaps it's January 1st, New Year's Day, and the 4th of July. Maybe it is Christmas and June. Maybe it is your birthdays or other holidays. But find some dates in your own personal calendar that you can change those batteries every six months that you will not forget about. Remember when I told you about the brief fire that started in my yard? Fortunately, I have a fire extinguisher nearby everywhere in my home. We have one at every level in our home, and I have one in my bedroom next to my bed. I have fire extinguishers next or in the rooms where I have fireplaces. We have fire extinguishers spread throughout our home because you never know when a fire could start. On average, home owners can expect a home fire every 15 years or five fires in a house in an average lifetime for the average home owner. My hope is that you never experience this but statistically you will. So make sure you have a fire extinguisher on every level of your home and near your kitchen, your bedroom, other bedrooms and throughout the house. Have an emergency escape plan in case of a fire or a tornado or other emergencies. Where will people go when an emergency strikes your home? 
Do the children in your home know to go to the basement in case there's a tornado? Do they know to run to the mailbox or other place if there's a fire in the house? How do they know this? You practice. Practice an emergency escape plan with your children and family for that fire, for that tornado, whatever it may be. Do they know to go to the basement if there's a tornado warning in your home? The only way they'll know that is if you tell them. Do they know to go to the mailbox and everybody meets at the mailbox or the end of the driveway or some other place if there's a fire in your home? Do they know this? They won't unless you practice it. And have two exits from your home in case of emergencies. If there's one exit is on fire or it's too hot to go near, there should be another exit. Again, practice this with your family. Perhaps you know somebody who has had their house broken into. Most likely you've had. You've had you know of somebody who's had their house broken into. Hopefully, your house has not been broken into itself. One way to ensure that your house is safer from a break-in is to have, give the illusion that somebody is in your home. You could do this by leaving some lights on when you leave your home, whether it's going across town to the grocery store or to the movie or out to eat. Maybe you're leaving the state on a vacation, whatever it may be. Make sure some lights are on when you leave your home. Again, to give the illusion that somebody's in the house. Pick up a timer and put your lights on these timers. Timers are inexpensive, they're simple to use, and they're easy to find. You can find them on, purchase them online. You can purchase them at your local hardware store or at a big box store. You might also consider having your TV on a timer as well perhaps from the hours of 6 to 9 p.m. or 7 to 10 p.m. Again, giving the illusion that somebody is in your home, that your home is occupied and not empty, not an invitation for a burglar or a prowler. Are your windows and doors locked? Keep your windows and doors locked, not only when you are away from your home, but when you are at home as well, because an intruder can come at any time, whether you are in the home or out of the home. So many believe that simply having your door locked will prevent a burglar from coming into your home or an intruder. This is not the case. An intruder can oftentimes easily break into your home through a locked door. One way to prevent the door from opening is to have a metal or wooden bar in the bottom track of sliding doors in your home and windows to not only prevent an intruder from coming in, but prevent children from going out. Have you ever walked up to a sliding glass door and thought the door was open? and instead you, smack, you, you walk smack dab into the door. It hurts, and it's a little funny, right? Well, it may be a little dangerous for a child. So ensure that the glass doors in your home are made out of some sort of safety glass so the child does not accidentally walk through or run through or is pushed through or fall through a normal glass door and cut themselves dangerously. Glass doors should be made out of some sort of safety glass. This includes your shower doors and patio doors as well. A step further, make sure that the glass on these doors is clearly marked at eye level with some sort of sticker, some sort of uh, adhesive pictures so that people in your home or friends or those visiting do not mistakenly walk right through the glass door. Does your home have an alarm or security system for your home? So many people are turning to these alarm and security systems more and more each day, each week, each month, each year. In fact, there are so many security and alarm systems out there 
businesses out there at the prices have come down. You might even consider installing a motion sensor security camera around location points to your home. Some of these alarm security systems will send an email alert when you are away from your home that somebody is around your house or trying to break in. Make sure your spare key to the home is not in an obvious place such as underneath a welcome mat or underneath a rock or above a door frame. Don't leave the keys to your car in the car either. One of the important aspects of home inspection is to make sure that all the medicines in your home are out of reach of children. Your medicines in your home should be locked up, put away, not only out of reach, but out of sight for young children as well. And this includes vitamins. Yes, vitamins. You see, a child can can take an overdose of vitamins. Today's vitamins for young children, for children, are often vitamins that are tasty. Well, the child may really enjoy the taste of those vitamins, and when you're not looking, sneak three more, four more, five more, even ten more, and that could be very dangerous. Make sure no medicines are left out on nightstands, in bathroom sinks, and purses for a child to get to. It is not uncommon for a child in foster care to go through a foster mother's purse and get medicine out of there. Not only should medicines be out of reach, but household cleaning products should also be out of reach for children as well. This means they should not be under the sink in your kitchen or in your bathroom unless, of course, they are locked up with a child-proof lock. The child in your home needs to be taught when to open a door. It may be that your child in foster care has had an open door policy in their previous homes where they opened the door to strangers or strangers would walk in at any time. If you're not teaching that child not to open to do the door to your home to others, who will teach them that? You need to teach them that. You need to teach the children in your home not to open the door to others. Instead, show them it's okay to wave to that person and then come and get you. But the children in your home should not be opening the door to strangers or to other people. One way an intruder checks to see if a house is empty is to call up the home beforehand. And if there's no answer, that might be an indication to that intruder that the house is empty. Your child in foster care may be running to answer the phone because he might think it's his mom or dad calling, or maybe he was a person entrusted to answer the phone at their own home. Teach your child phone etiquette. How to introduce themselves in the phone. How to call out for you in the phone. How to say, hello, this is so-and-so. One moment, I'll get them. Phone etiquette needs to be taught to your child by you. Have them memorize your phone numbers as well as your full names in case of emergencies. Perhaps they are at a school, at the, the school they attend, and they become sick, and the teacher needs to get hold of you. As a foster parent, the teacher may not have your phone number. It may not be in their records, school records. Have the child memorize your phone numbers as well as your full name. Instruct that child how to call 911 in an emergency. Older children, show older children how they can text you in case of emergency as well. When you allow brushes, bushes and shrubs and brushes, <laughs> when you allow bushes and shrubs and trees to grow close to your home, sure, it may cut down the cost of heating, and it may look nice, and it may invite birds, but it also is a place for intruders to hide. 
See, you invite intruders to hide. You give them a, you provide them a place to hide when you have bushes and shrubs and trees growing close to your home. So keep them trimmed short. Keep those bushes and shrubs and trees trimmed so they do not conce have concealed hiding spots for the intruder. Make sure your driveway entrances to your home is well lit at night so that when you drive in, not only can you see, but not only and your, your friends and visitors can see as well, it also is a deterrent to intruders as well. A well lit driveway oftentimes scares away the intruder. If you have motion sensor lights around your homes, please know this. That is not a deterrent to your home. You see, an intruder can come to your home in the daytime and put some type of masking tape or a cardboard or whatever it may be around the motion sensor detector itself and then return in the evening. And since that motion sensor has been affected in some way, turned off, if you will, that light will never come on. So consider this, motion sensor lights can easily be exploited by an intruder wishing to come near home. Instead, consider timing devices on outside lights when you are away from your home, and perhaps when you're at home as well. I love a good fire in the wintertime. I have two fireplaces in my home. They keep my house very, very warm. I'm also very consistent and diligent in making sure that my fireplaces, my my wood, uh, my wood steamers are very, very safe. I'm always cleaning them out. Make sure that any type of fireplace device in your home is safe as well. Make sure that children do not have access to fireplace instruments in your home as well. All electrical outlets in your home should be covered in some way. You do this to make sure the child can have, cannot trip over the electrical cords in the home and make sure that all cords are in good condition. So cover your electrical outlets, make sure no electrical cords can be tripped over in the home, and all electrical cords are in good condition and not catch on fire. Are you somebody who loves candles in your home? Many fires begin with simple candles. Maybe your house has radiators or electrical heaters or electrical blankets in your house. These can also catch on fire. So make sure that pillows, curtains, rugs, blankets, and other materials in your home are safe from catching on fire. Keep them away from your fireplaces. Keep them away from candles and electrical heaters and radiators and other sources of heat in your home. I love my pool. My pool was one of the best investments I made in our home. We have taught so many children how to swim in a pool and we have seen so many children heal through play, play therapy if you will, through the use of our pool. Horrifically, 3,000 children a year will die in America from drowning. So if you have any sort of pool, keep your pool gated, keep your pool fenced in, make it difficult to gain access to a fenced in pool. Many states require that each pool is fenced in. If your state does not require it, fence in your pool in any ways. You would hate for the neighbor's child to wander over to your house and fall in the pool as well. Again, all it takes for you to turn your back for a moment and disaster can strike. The same thing can happen during bath time. Do not leave a small child unattended in the bathroom, even for a moment. Don't put a baby in the bathtub and then run to the kitchen to turn off the stove. That's when disaster strikes. Monitor 
your child's time in the bath. Supervision, once again, is the key to protecting children. Make sure your bathtub or shower has some sort of slip resistant bottom of some kind on it. Ensure that the floors in your home, your floors in your patio that become slippery, make sure they are not slippery. Consider buying rugs or mats of some sort with a non-slip rug to prevent falls in slippery areas around in your home. Years ago there was that popular commercial, I've fallen and I can't get up. Remember that? If you remember it, a smile is probably coming to your lips right now because it was kind of a comical commercial. Sadly, over 50% of falls occur in the home. Keep your house tidy. Prevent accidents. Prevent falling down in your home by picking up the toys and other items lying around the floor in your home. Yes, as a parent, this is a non-stop battle. If you have small children in your home, then most likely there's going to be toys in your home floor at all times. It's just what comes with parenting. But make sure you or the child and both are picking them up. Make sure rugs and carpets don't cause accidents. Again, have mats down in the shower, the bathtub, and outside of the bathtub, and around the bathroom as well. Have handrails on stairs in your home. Have a light switch at the top of the stairs and the bottom of the stairs. So if someone's going up the stairs in the middle of the night or down the stairs in the middle of the night, they can simply switch on a light switch and see much more clear. There might be a toy lying in the middle of the stairs. Maybe the stairs are slippery. Maybe a pillow or a blanket is left in the stairs. Or maybe they just trip in the middle of the night. A light switch is a necessity. Now you do not want your small child going up the top of the stairs when you're not around, not supervising. So keep a child gate at the top and the bottom of the stairs to prevent a child from falling down the stairs or going up the stairs when you do not want the child to do so. If your stair handrail has some sort of spindles on it, make sure the spindles are not wide enough the child can poke their head through there. And make sure stairs are always free of clutter as well. Look at the picture there. We see a picture of a baby crying in a crib. The baby is surrounded by toys and it looks cute. But the reality is this. All that child has to do, that small infant has to do, is roll over and be smothered by one or all of those toys. So keep stuffed animals, large pillows, extra blankets, and even additional clothing out of baby cribs and small beds to prevent an accident from happening. Heavy furniture can be a concern in your home as a foster parent, for you see some furniture and TVs can, can tip over upon a child. Years ago, I remember my wife went to a corner cabinet that we'd installed. She had the cabinet fall upon her. We were blessed that she was A, not hurt, and blessed that it was her, not a child. In fact, my wife was so grateful it was not a child that it fell upon, but she was grateful that it was her because it had done a lot of damage to the child. Ensure that all furniture in your home is safe from tipping over. Use bra braces or brackets to secure heavy furniture. Mount a TV upon a wall if possible and have a professional do it. In many states, foster parents are not allowed to have any type of gun or weapons in their home. Some states do allow it. If your state or agency allows guns in your foster home, make sure that all guns are locked in a gun safe. Ammunition for that gun must also be locked safely away as well. Keep the key to your gun safe hidden. You see, we've heard those stories about a child getting access to the gun safe when the parents were not around. 
parents were not looking, that child got the key and took the gun. And disaster happens. Guns must have children's safety locks upon them as well. Your washing machine and dryer can be a fantastic place for hide and go seek for a child in their eyes. We know the dangers of it though. So make sure your washing machine and dryer are not in places where a child can hide or get trapped in. Keep laundry detergents and bleaches out of reach of children. Did you know that each year more than 2,800 children are treated in emergency rooms after swallowing button batteries, those tiny round batteries? That's one child every three hours. Indeed, the number of serious injuries and deaths resulting from button batteries has increased dramatically in the last decade. These small batteries can be, as you see here, very dangerous. So batteries should be out of reach of small children. This includes remote control batteries, batteries for toys and calculators, hearing aid batteries, batteries for thermometers or flashing light displays, and any other device that has any sort of battery in it. Store your loose batteries in areas that children do not have access to. Each year, children are also seriously injured in the kitchen. When my wife was seven, boiling hot water fell upon her while her mother was cooking. Fortunately, she was not seriously hurt. Yet children like her every year are seriously hurt in the kitchen. So be cautious when cooking on the stove. Keep knives and sharp kitchen instruments out of reach of children. Do not carry small children in your arms when you're cooking around a stove. Be careful that hot water in any fashion, including kitchen, tap, or sink water, does not scald the child. And keep hot food away from every counter edge in your kitchen. All it takes is for you to turn your back to go to the refrigerator and a small arm tip over a hot food dish onto the child. Do not store your matches, your lighters, and gasoline in any place where a child has access to. When purchasing a toy for a child, ensure that, to that toy is age appropriate for the child. Read the directions completely and fully and carefully carefully read through the warning labels of the toy. Watch for a small piece that could fall off the toy and choke the child. Store toys in safe containers when the child is finished playing with it. Remember the toy box you had as a child? Same type of thing. Keep the toys in a safe container not only so you or somebody does not trip over the, the toy, but so the toy is put away and the child cannot choke on the toy when you're not watching. Along with toys and batteries, keep small magnets away from a child. Children love magnets. They are a very mysterious thing for a child and they can be easily swallowed. Cut food into small pieces for small children when, you're, when you have a small child in your home and it's time for meal time. Ensure that all cords, electrical cords, curtains, windows, etc. are out of reach for children as well. All of these can cause choking in your home. Finally, get to know the others in your neighborhood. Form relationships with your neighbors. How does this help? Well, you can help your neighbors by looking out for them and collecting their mail taking care of their garbage cans, feeding their dogs, whatever it may be when they're gone, and they can do the same for you. When you've developed a friendly relationship with your neighbors, they can watch over your home when you're gone. They can help to keep intruders away from your home 
by taking care of the newspapers, by taking care of the garbage can and the mail, all those signs for intruders that your house is empty. Your neighbors can help you by being part of a team. Now, whether you're a foster parent or not, whether you have children in your home or do not have children in your home, you want to make sure that your home is a safe environment for yourself and for everybody who comes to visit and comes to live with your home. And safe homes and safe families begin with you. They begin with your supervision. They begin with you keeping the doors locked. They begin with you picking up the toys and things on the floor. They begin with you making sure that pillows and blankets are away from candles and fire. They begin with you by making sure that the, t the floors and your bathtubs and showers have some type of sticky decal. It begins with you making sure the batteries in your smoke alarms are up to date. It begins with you so much more. Supervision is key to home safety. For more on this or to find other training webinars, visit the Foster Care Institute. You can find me on Twitter and on Facebook. And if you have questions about this webinar or others, email me at drjohndegarmo at gmail.com. For much more on how to survive in today's foster parents, pick up a copy of the Foster Care Survival Guide, The Essential Guide for Today's Foster Parents. You can find this book on Amazon.com, all good bookstores, and you can order signed copies at the Foster Care Institute website as well. And we have several books for you there as well. When you care for children in need, when a child is placed in your home, Foster care agencies, child welfare agencies, state and private agencies need to ensure that your home is one that protects a child from harm. Thank you for keeping children safe. Thank you for protecting children from danger. For the Foster Care Institute, I'm Dr. John DeGarmo.